champions meet. The gods looked down from Mount Olympus. Athena was anxious that the Trojan forces would wreak havoc among her favorites, who were led by Agamemnon. She hurried down to make some changes. Apollo, who favored the Trojans, raced to intercept her. They met close to the roaring battlefield, and in the din of the battle, these two schemers talked. I know what you want, Athena, said Apollo. You want nothing more than to have Troy of the broad streets burned to ashes. Athena tried to interrupt, but Apollo went on. It's late afternoon. The sun will set soon. I'll persuade Hector to challenge the Greeks to send a hero to fight him in a duel. Athena laughed at that. I hope for your sake he's braver than his brother. We'll see, said Apollo. Athena and Apollo sat in a huge oak tree, leaned their weapons against the highest branches, and waited. During a lull in the fighting, Hector stepped in front of the Trojan lines, holding back his own men with his shield and spear. Then he stepped into the no-man's land between the armies to issue his challenge. It seems that Zeus from his high throne wants to watch us suffer until you bring down the towers of Troy, or until you are beaten back to the beaches and into your ships. I propose we stop this gory battle, and that I fight your champion man to man. Winner takes all. The Greeks sat in the dust to rest their bruised and bloodied bodies, and as did the Trojans. Rank after rank of men, weapons ready by their side, spears upright like the quills of a giant porcupine. Hector spoke as the two armies silently listened. With Zeus as my witness, if your man wins, he may strip the armor and take it, but he must leave the body so that my wife and the Trojans may burn it properly. If Apollo lets me win, I promise that your man may be buried and a mound raised to make a monument to a warrior killed in a single combat by the heroic Hector. Choose a champion to fight me. No one moved. Hector looked slowly along the lines of the Greek soldiers, but none would meet the eye of his fearless man. Apollo looked at Athena and smirked. They watched from the top branches of the oak, two bent-necked vultures, waiting, waiting. Eventually, there was a flurry of movement, and the man stood up. It was Menelaus, who cried of the men around him. You women of Greece, sit and rot. I will fight Hector myself. Menelaus began to prepare his most glorious armor, though he knew he was as good as dead. Hector was a much great, greater fighter than he was. The Greeks needed mighty Achilles, but he sat in the shade by his ships and slept. Agamemnon hurried to his brother and begged Menelaus not to do it. Brother, even Achilles is afraid to meet Hector in single combat. Go and sit down. We will find someone other to fight this man. Reluctantly, Menelaus gave in and sat apart from the other men, ashamed. Apollo shifted in the, his branch and lifted his long, scraggy neck to the bright sunlight. Athena sat and waited. Below them, Nestor, the old and wise, rose to his feet to speak. It was enough to make all of Greece weep. How the great heroes of our past would be ashamed, as I am ashamed. If I were younger, I would stand, but words are easy, as you, are, as you cowards know. I can, he continued angrily until nine men could bear it no longer. Diomedes and Domenus and his squire and six others claimed to the right fight. You will choose with stone, said Nestor, and each man made his mark on a stone and tossed it into Nestor's helmet. A stone came to Nestor's hand when he took the burnished helmet was what they all had wished for. Ajax rejoiced. He turned and asked them to pray to Zeus for his victory. In the tree, Apollo watched eagerly. Athena was relieved that the Greeks had a man willing to fight the mighty Hector. Ajax adjusted his flashing bronze armor, the bright metal buckled to his legs, and the burnished metal on his shoulder and down his back, carved and etched with images of wild animals in the goddess Athena. His sword blade was inlaid with gold and silver, his helmet topped with a curving mane of a horsehair dyed blood red. He took his spear and his seven-layered oxide shield and stepped into no man's land. Now, said Hector, you will see what type of men we are. We Greeks are. Even we, the best of us, Achilles, the breaker of men, lies by the ships. You will see. Hector answered Ajax as brave as a brave man would, without boasting. I know, Prince Ajax, who you are, but you cannot frighten me with words. I am a fighter, far away or close up. I am ready. But let me say, I see a man before me. So let's fight. With that, Hector flung his dark shadow javelin. It tore through six layers of Ajax seals. The seventh held. Ajax, fl Ajax flung his javelin. It glanced off the shining embossing of Hector's shield, sliced through the leather tunic of his thigh, but missed his flesh as Hector swerved aside. Now they fell on each other like savage beasts. 
Ajax cut Hector's neck with a spear below. A spear blow. Hector drew black, back a little, bent over, and in one mo movement picked up and hurled a jagged rock at Ajax. His shield rang out as the stone hit the embossing. Ajax quickly hurled a boulder that swept Hector off his feet and smashed his shield. Apollo saw that his hero was about to be butchered by Ajax, Ajax and raised his man to his feet. Athena was angry, but it was too late. Again the two men fell on each other, this time with broad-bladed swords flashing in the evening light. Back and forth they fought some sometimes, hid in the clouds of whirling dust they raised. Often all the armies knew all the armies knew were the clashing sounds of bronze on bronze, and the grunts of the two men slashed and paired, hit and thrust. The sun began to fall beyond the sea, and the dark shadows stretched over the battlegrounds. The shadows of long spears fell across the dust. In a pause at the champ as the champions dragged in bre breath to slow their pumping hearts, Hector said, Ajax, you are worthy a worthy champion and a great spearman. I admit it. If I suggest we stop fighting today, we can meet again and go on until the gods decide which of us shall die. The light is fading. Maybe we should take the hint. With blood smeared in their arms, their necks and their chests, the two men looked into each other's eyes and trusted what they saw. Ajax pushed his blunted sword into its sheath. Hector, to the surprise of his men, undid his sword belt and handed it with his silver-studded sword to his opponent. Ajax took off his own splendid purple belt and handed it to Hector. The two men clasped hands and parted as friends. The sun fell over the rim of the world. Night.